Hello everybody, it's uh, Peter the Rock, it's Friday the 19th of April. This is uh, just a few seconds after the previous video. Uh, uh, I'm approaching HS2. The point of this video is to just show how impressive it is from close up. There's a sign there that says, implies that uh, if your vehicle or you on your horse or whatever are higher than 4.5 meters, um, don't don't come this way. Now 4.5 meters um, in old money, let's see, 39 inches in a meter, uh, four of those at uh, 440, uh, it's about 180 inches, which is about 15, 15 foot. Yeah. Now that's surprisingly low, so they're being a bit careful because there's supposed to be a 30 foot clearance um, uh, between the HS2 arches, the, uh, the trackway, and the ambient land and surface level. They're saying if you're, if you're 15 foot tall, you and your vehicle, maybe you're riding a giraffe or something, or you're on stilts for some reason, perhaps, perhaps it's a bet, you know, you had a bet with someone in the pub and um, you, you have, have to wear some stilts and you're 16 foot tall, then obviously don't come this way. But I think it's a good 30 foot high and it's very exciting. You know, it's so exciting that Dominique has moved towards London. Um, it's pointless sort of working out how quickly it's going. It moves in little fits and starts. That's what we used to say. Uh, and the lights, that even the lights are changing in our favour. So it's green. Oh, hello, it's going back to red again. So you don't get very long. Um, if the signal is not changing to green, please push button. Should we do that, viewers? Could get in trouble here. Wait for signal. Um, not quite sure what that's all about because it was green for all of three seconds. Now it's green again. Let's count one, two, three. Yeah, you get about three seconds of green. So if you're on your, a giraffe and it's slow to get going, you could be in trouble. Anyway, we're okay because I, I'm not on a giraffe. I'm not a bit higher than four foot. 4.5 meters. Here's a good view, isn't it? It's everything is foreshortened if you if you look down, Dominique. There's the famous hole there, which is might well be used for maintenance. And um, there are some people are attaching things to that pier over there. And this is the Granion Canal, on which there are more ducks, which is great. So, the canal has not been altered, it hasn't had to change route. Uh, it's been here for 200 years and people thought, oh well, it takes precedence. It's a beautiful canal. It goes from London to Birmingham, as you know, it used to be called the Grand Junction Canal, well before my time. Let's have a look at what it's like to be underneath the trackway. There's a lot of serious banging going on. I think someone in the comments said it was cathedral-like which um well it's not exactly but I, I i know what he's getting at it's uh it's like being in a, a a large open space with even more open than a cathedral of course and there are no stained glass windows to see uh there's some serious steel around the place look at this uh, those girders, they can't be lifted by by hand. Um, now, I don't know what they're doing with that, that pier. It does worry me that actually working on a pier which seems to have um, finished its uh, development process. Um, here is a, 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 some CCTV looking at me. People in the future will be scratching their beards looking at the TV footage um, hello Fred, there's that bloke 
in the Doctor Who scarf doing a bit of filming again. Oh, I wish I could find it. If only I knew his name. Uh, oh, I found it. I found it. It's Peter the Rock. Fantastic. Well, it's too late now, but, you know, we should name this viaduct pier after him. Uh, this is this is fantastic, isn't it? Look how high that is. You know, it, it, if you fell off the viaduct, and the people aren't wearing it safety harnesses, obviously. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't survive if you fell onto this this land. You, even if you, you know you do more than break eggs, you'd uh, you'd be dead. Um, now, I did mention previously that the, these two piers that um, support the viaduct astride the canal are not as symmetric as the other piers. And what I mean by that is. Uh, the canal side of the pier is more vertical than the out outside, if you like. Um, that looks like it's a way of stressing because uh, my theory is that this span is bigger than the average span. You can actually see also, looking in that direction, that the, uh, the viaduct is curving round to the right. But all close-up views are necessarily, you know, not as good as distance views. And I, I'm very grateful to Q-Master with his drone or his helicopter or whatever he's got, assuming it's a he, who films a different, completely different perspective to the Peter the Rock ground eye view. Now, uh, one interesting feature is uh, when I was here last, which was eight days ago, uh, the middle part of this span had a metal metal round it. I think you can still see the remains of it. Let me let me focus in on that. Um, there, the middle part of this span was um, was where they were doing some grouting, finally linking the two. That's all done now, but there is another black line further down, just above the pier, which looks like they're going to do some more. Um, and uh, I mean, one thing I wonder about is that these engineers have been on this project for weeks, months, years, and uh, oh, here's another signal. It's red, of course. Let's see if it changes to just three seconds. I've, I've done it. It's green. One two, three, yep, only three seconds you get. <laughs> Which, if you're driving a car, gives you time to get out of the car, press the button, oh look, Hilda, it's green. Get back in the car, Dave. Oh, all right, Hilda. And then it would be red again. So uh, don't bring your car here, uh, it's my advice. Uh, um, I was quite flattered today. I, I, I get lots of comments now. I, I'm, I think uh, as we speak, it's the 19th of April, I've got something like uh, nearly 900 comments, 300 of which have come in the last month. I don't know why that is. Um, and you get some ongoing conversations with people and, and people um, looking at my YouTube channel uh, do delve back a bit to previous videos, including one about two weeks ago where I crossed a ploughed field on foot, of course. And uh, I rather, tongue-in-cheek really, suggested the best way to, to do it was to sort of walk on the hills rather than the, uh, the, the, the vales of the ploughed field, not knowing anything about it, but I found that the most comfortable way to do it. It was a field that had been ploughed only the day before, and somebody commented, oh, thank you for your advice on how to cross a ploughed field, which um, it made my day, really. And um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm easily, uh, uh, easily impressed with any sort of praise. Um, not that I know much about it, but uh, there you are. So my advice is if you're if you're bringing a car, 
um, you've got a bit of a problem. You need to be the person pressing the button needs to be on the left hand side which in this car country 99% of the cars are right hand drive so it needs to be the passenger needs to lean out of the window press the button it'll turn yellow uh, very quickly as we just saw and then turn red again three seconds later whereas if you're coming from the other side you need to be the driver who presses the button because it's on the right hand side so it, this is a it's quite a sort of a difficult test can you get a car underneath the hs2 viaduct i don't think you can anyway i've given you the parameters as to how it could work now um getting back to dominique hs2 the um the back bits which look a bit like antennae from a distance are still a mystery don't know what they are um, I'm rather sad to see Dominic disappear really it's been such a big part of my life <laughs> for uh, for weeks or months it's sad isn't it um, now the good news is that uh, there's a ramp ahead and dogs should be on leads. The, uh, the second video in this, oh hello, here comes a van. So I wonder how he got through with the um, pressing the button. He may have ignored it. Um, but the good news is dogs are on leads. Now, if of course the, uh, in a previous video, but one or two, uh, where there's a missing chihuahua called Piglet, or is it a missing Piglet called Chihuahua? Um, if it or he were on a lead, then he wouldn't be missing now. So, message there, Peter the Rock's tips for how not to lose your chihuahua, put it on a lead. And also, tip number two, don't call it piglet, because it'll have a, an incentive to escape, much as the Jack Russell in Amersham being called mouse. Uh, had an urge to escape and Jack, uh, Dave Figley's um, mouse called Jack also sadly escaped. Somewhere in this world there is a mouse, a Jack Russell and a Chihuahua and maybe a piglet. Who knows? I just don't know. So there we are, a bit of light-hearted chat. Thanks a lot for watching. It's uh, Peter the Rock, uh, and it's Friday the 19th of April. Cheers, like and subscribe.